Church. I'm your brother Kasafo. And I'm your brother Zakwa. Hope you all are enjoying the Shabbat today. And hope you all are enjoying this journey, the opportunity, the edification, and getting an understanding of what's going on so we can be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We went through a lot of things in the understanding of spiritual fornication and idolatry. Hopefully it was helpful, insightful, and encouraging for this journey. We're about to get into some more things going forward, and we want to make sure we have what we need to get through it. Uh, Zach, was there anything before we get going, my man? Uh, make sure everybody checks out the website, www.hebrewreaders.com. Uh, make sure you subscribe. And hit the notification bell so that you can get all the new videos that we post Alahan Willing. And thank you for whatever you may share, clips you may share on your page or whatever. Thank you for putting the work in, in yourselves that you're putting in because that's really helping by making the change to help others see that it's possible through Yache, our Alahan and Ahaya, Father of our Lord. Huh. Okay. We good to go, Zachwa? Good to go. Let's ride. All right. These lessons are about to be intimate going forward, really calling out the works of these spirits to help us understand and avoid them. So today, we'll talk about our listening skills to help us better listen and understanding why it's important to listen and what's attacking us to keep us from listening for our salvation. Can you start at Romans chapter 10, verse 17, please? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of Elohim. I just realized is Yacha who strengthens us to hear? He's the word of Allah. I am. Jeez. <laughs> I that so. So, faith comes by hearing because whose words we yield to agree with is who we will obey as their servants. If you don't have anything, Romans 6 and 16, please. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Paul asks a question to, to see if we understood that, that reality and that truth. Because there's only two sides in every listening session. Either the devil unto death by sin or Allah unto righteousness by obedience to his voice and his spirits. The world yield. It means give way to arguments, demands, or pressure. So both sides are aiming to sway. It's just the devil pressures overbearingly unto perversion by his angel while Allah entreats gently unto conversion through his angel. Hermas, mandate six. So we can see this in chapter two, verse one, two, three, please. Here now, saith he, concerning faith. There are two angels with a man, one of righteousness and one of wickedness. How then, sir, say I, shall I know their workings, seeing that both angels dwell with me? 
Hear, saith he, and understand their workings. The angel of righteousness is delicate and bashful and gentle and tranquil. When he is with us, we will feel at peace too, as he is. And notice that it's true in every instant we're in a listening session because both angels are actually dwelling with us, swaying, seeking to sway. Now with the angel of righteousness, it's easier to hear him when we are at peace as well as he speaks gently. So we need that silence in ourselves to be able to hear him and have him enter in. Continue, please. When then this one enters into thy heart, forthwith he speaketh with thee of righteousness, of purity, of holiness, and of contentment, of every righteous deed, and of every glory of the virtue. That includes confessing our faults and being honest with ourselves in temperance. It's key to be honest with ourselves in temperance. It makes a difference. It's hopefully you'll understand. Notice that he talks with us once we yield to him. So we have to be listening out for him to hear him. <laughs> also, he doesn't operate in bad desires like the angel of wickedness. So we have to be tempered to hear. When listening to him, we will hear good things persuading us and encouraging us to do the things the law commands. And when evil thoughts come in, he will pressure us, weighing on our conscience with the spirit of truth helping to get us to reason and not agree or do the act so we don't yield ourselves to idols. Keeping silence and not being eager nor beguiling ourselves with vain words is essential to be in a place of willingness to listen. The thing is, he's gentle and tranquil, so he isn't forceful or going to keep repeating himself. He will respect our decision in his pity after entreating us. So to hear him, we also have to be gentle and tranquil. That's why we have to keep silence in a pure heart so we can actually hear what Allah Hayyam is saying through him. Uh, continue, please. When all these things enter into thy heart, know that the angel of righteousness is with thee. These then are the works of the angel of righteousness. Trust him, therefore, and his works. Once we genuinely listen, we'll definitely do some good from his teachings. Can you read chapter 2 verse 8 please? And if again a man or a woman be exceedingly wicked and the works of the angel of righteousness come into that man's heart, he must of necessity do something good. So you see, faith by hearing and obeying him can convert us no matter what we come from. As it says, even if we were exceedingly wicked, if his works come into our heart, we must of necessity do some good. So no matter where we come from, if we work on really settling down and listening well and only agreeing and yielding ourselves to the right thoughts that come from him, from Allah Hayyam, eventually that's going to become our nature, our character and who we actually are by consistent work. And knowing this Allah at work in us, not we ourselves. So see the importance of taking heed to ourselves and who we listen to, to yield ourselves to their pressure or advice, if you will. Can you read Deuteronomy 11 and 16, please? Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived. And you turn aside and serve other Allah and worship them. Being on guard at all times to keep ourselves will keep from the idleness that self-indulgency plays in. It's genuinely what it is. We really have to take heed to ourselves. We talk about it a lot where 
pay attention to our feelings, our energy, our our inclinations, where our thoughts are leading, what thoughts are coming in, how we, where is our heart at in a matter, even listening to make sure we're going to get more into these things as we talk today, Lord willing, even paying attention as we're listening, paying attention to our body, paying attention that we're actually settled in and taking heed to ourselves because we don't want our heart to be deceived to turn aside to serve any other deity or worship them by doing service unto them. Taking heed, if we look at this word, it helps confirm what we're learning. Remember, Hebrew is descriptive. So the word chemaro, which is the Hebrew that we're about to get into, for taking heed is describing protecting and taking heed to our thoughts and actions. This is why it has the various definitions that it has. Can we look at H8104, please, Chemaro? To keep, guard, observe, give heed, have charge of. Interesting. <laughs> the Lord lent us his spirit. He gave it to us pure. And we have charged to keep it and return it as such. <laughs> okay. Continue, please. Keep watch and ward, protect, save life. So we have to be on guard to save the life that is in long suffering and humility of the commandments and the life of the actual spirit that he put in us to keep us alive. It's a duty for us. That's why we have to take heed to ourselves, understanding we've been given something that's precious and valuable to Allah Hayyam, our Lord, and he wants it back pure as he gave it. All right. <laughs> Continuing the definitions of Strong's, please. A primitive root properly to hedge about as with thorns that is to guard. You remember Zakwa talked about having protocols it's a guard duty so things have to be in place to protect the spirit hedging it about with thorns all right generally to protect attend to it takes attention to ourselves paying attention to what's going on within us to do this okay etc beware be circumspect, take heed to self, or to take heed, look narrowly. So don't get distracted from the work, stay focused, look narrowly on the one goal, entering into that straight gate, focused on making sure we're doing the work of Allah Hayyam, and all of our works are for Allah Hayyam. Being circumspect, that is paying careful attention to make sure that's what we're doing and thinking and speaking according to. Continue, please. Observe, preserve, regard, reserve, save, save self, sure, that lay wait for or wait watch a watchman so we can save our soul by laying in wait watching out for the angel of righteousness to obey him and also laying in wait watching out for the angel of wickedness not to obey him <laughs> all right the bantu dialects because we know bantu is hebrew the Bantu dialects, well, if you didn't know, hopefully this will help understand. <laughs> right. The Bantu dialects identify the root words in Chimaro that are being used because Chimaro is a sentence in Bantu. In Igbo, the root word Che means think, mind, ponder, meditate. So you can see how from the root word, it helps understand why we have to keep the law in our mind and thoughts continually meditating upon them. Also, che means guard, protect, 
watch for wait just like we read the definition right <laughs> like you may have said ching che that means keep watch be vigilant right so che watch out so che also lets us know we have to be on guard at all times watching and taking heed to our thoughts to listen to the angel of righteousness lest the enemy creep in with wicked imaginations or a fit of some sort, or some evil desire, so that we may protect the Lord's spirit he lent to us, and our senses that Allah Hayyam gave to us for their uses. And knowing hearing comes by the word of Allah Hayyam, that reminds us why Paul told us to pray without ceasing. Also, be asking Yache, the word of Allah Hayyam to help, to help me listen, help me be attentive to myself, help me be aware of what's going on. Because it literally comes from him. <laughs> it comes from them, right? The ability to hear and hear well. Right. See, the senses they gave. Yeah, help me use the senses you gave me <laughs> to do what you asked me to do. <laughs> oh. Now, that's one root root. That was just the first one, Che. Now, the next root word is Ma. And we can get edification in Igbo. Ma means no recognized knowledge. What you may hear, Imata, means to discern, perceive. So, we have to know Yache's voice. And recognize it to keep guard of his word, discerning his voice in his angel. And discerning the words of his father that he gave his angel to speak. Also, we have to recognize the voice of the enemy by having knowledge of the law and how his spirits operate to discern wisely when he is trying to lead us to transgress. So you can understand why Chema, you even hear the Hebrew creed or hear, O Israel, Chema Echre Allah. So it's here, God, protect and perceive Echre Allah. Recognize, have knowledge Echre Allah, that Ahaya, our Allah Hayam, is one Ahaya. Don't let any other spirit in your mind <laughs> to serve them because our Allah Hayam is one there's no duplicity. He's not with those other spirits. So we have to hear him only and we have to love him with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind and all our strength. All right. Now, we went through two words, I mean, two root words of Chemaro. Now let's go into the last word, Ro. And it's a Yoruba word. I got to say, Yoruba. It's a Yoruba word. The word ro means thought, speculate, discern, concepts, plan, intention, opinion, ideas. So we see how whomever's words we think upon forms our opinions and will manifest in our intentions and ideas. If we watch vigilantly, to discern Yache's voice, to recognize him and guard his words through his angel, then our thoughts and ideas will be in righteousness. And whatever we plan to do will be according to his will because we will do things with counsel as he instructs. Now, on the other hand, if we're not diligent to keep our minds hedged about by protecting ourselves from the enemy through our Lord Yache praying unto him, knowing that it's through Allah Hayyam we get delivered from the spiritual warfare. Then, in our idleness, our intentions and thoughts of our mind will be evil too. And what actions we plan to do will lead to evil, either by the pleasure it gives or the deceit used to blind us from paying attention to what was going on because of the pleasure we were perverted to fulfill. Hopefully that helps understand the importance of taking our time to listen well, taking heed to ourselves and whatever we hear and whatever we're doing. 
you don't have anything. Uh, Nafta day three and one, please. Be ye therefore not eager to corrupt your doings through covetousness or with vain words to beguile your souls. Because if ye keep silence and purity of heart, ye shall understand how to hold fast the will of Elohim and to cast away the will of Belier. All through listening, all through silencing ourselves and listening. We have to trust and believe. If we do this, we will be able to hear and wait for the righteous angel's guidance, showing faith to wait and serving faith by doing the virtuous works that he speaks of. All right. Hopefully you're already seeing why the evil spirits like to get us sped up or hasty or anxious and not to wait because they know if we wait and trust, we're going to get helped. Okay. And also know if you're getting vexed or in your feelings because you have to wait. There's also your desire that plays into it too. Because evil spirits can't get us to do anything we don't want to do. Okay? So if you find you're getting uneasy, fearful, upset, or angered because of the waiting process, understand it's not the right spirit in it. All right? Can you read Habakkuk 2 and 4, please? Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Be mindful of being uplifted in idolatry, not to listen or do what's commanded in keeping silence, not being eager while reasoning on these good things to get guidance from Allah Hayyam. To be just, we have to live by our faith, listening to Allah Hayyam's words only, that we may be nourished to be firm in faith. Okay. I'm going to get a bit of understanding of that. Do this Hebrew again. The root word for faith in that verse in Habakkuk is H545. Can you read that please, Zachla? You want the definition of the word? Uh, if you want to do the word too, you can. But you can do a definition, please. Okay. Bringing up nourishment, rearing, training, providing for as a parent. The word amono. It's interesting that this is the root word for faith, H530, that we're going to get to. But we started here because why is the root word for faith talking about Bringing up and nourishing as a parent. In Igbo and Yoruba, in Yoruba, the word amu means breastfeeding. And the word mu means to drink. Also in Bantu, I'm mean, sorry, in Yoruba and Igbo, nu means drink. Now, interestingly, so you see, you know, baby's being nourished, feeding it with milk, right? To nourish it, bring it up, strengthen it through breast milk. The word nu in Igbo also means to hear. So it's showing that they go hand in hand. And you're going to see that the apostles understood it because they spoke Hebrew in that what you hear actually nourishes you. It fattens you. For example, you hear and listen to Yache's word, it's going to nourish you in his spirit, in the spirit of Allah Hayyam. But if you're nourishing the words of Satan through the angel of wickedness or his spirits, you're nourishing that and it's going to cause you to wax fat and kick. And so you can see the listening faith actually, even in the understanding of the words, has to do with hearing and what we take in. Just as a baby takes milk, what we take in, the words that we hear is the milk that we're taking in to feed our souls and nourish us and strengthen us to be firm in either faith in good works to Allah Hayyam or unbelief in the works of the devil. Can you read 1 Peter 2 and 1 to 3, please? Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, 
and all evil speakings. Laying aside all the evil speaking of idols, not to obey them in anything. Okay, continue, please. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. And if so be ye have tasted that, the Lord is gracious. See how he, through the language, he's teaching us the same parallel of milk for a child and the sincere milk of the word in our hearing. The growth of our faith truly comes by hearing the milk of the word, obeying the angel of righteousness, so we can grow by getting used to being fed with that milk until we become strong in obedience as a child will grow strong by consistent milk. All right. And you have to get experiences too. Cause he said, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. You got to investigate the truth and inquire concerning the deity. You got to put it to the test and taste and see. <laughs> That's right. You got to get it. Okay. Mm. All right. <laughs> you got to taste that milk and honey <laughs> to know it's good for us. You know, let's look at the word for faith now. Amenu. And yes, the two words are the same because Hebrew is a language of tone, pitch, and pronunciation. And it's consistent today in Bantu, like in Igbo. You can say the word aqua. It's like three or four different ways to say aqua, aqua, aqua. All of it actually means something different. Hebrew is Hebrew. <laughs> it ain't changed from back then. We're saying the same almanu, but it's pronunciation based, pitch and everything changes what we're saying. And when you say it another way, let's read H530 to see what it means, please. Literally firmness. Figuratively, security, moral, fidelity, faith, faithful, faithly, faith, faithness, set office, stability, steady, truly, truth, verily. So the result of being nourished by listening to the angel of righteousness will make us firm, faithful, steady, and stable in the service of Allah Hayyam. And notice he said one of the definitions is set office. When Allah Hayyam sees he can trust the soul because it's faithful and listening to him, he'll put it in a position <laughs> within his work. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's a process of getting used to Allah Hayyam's milk in his word. But we have to desire it, as Peter said, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk. And start practicing to gain skill in listening to his angel, to grow in obedience to Allah Hayyam's oracles, getting that taste of his milk to see that it's actually good. And we're going to get firm. When we get, the firmer we get, the fatter we get as a baby needs to get fat and plump. You need to make sure that happens to know the baby's healthy. The firmer we get, and listen to Allah Hayim and grow in fat in faith, we're going to get secure. And we're going to show ourselves to be in fidelity to Allah Hayim, right? Can you read, touching on the growing process of listening, can you read Hebrews 5 and 12, please? But when the time ye ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracle of Allah Hayyam. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Remember the angel of righteousness talks of righteousness and virtues. So we as children have to learn through listening well, being honest about where we are in our walk and journey. We have to be real to know, hey, I have need of being taught again. And that's okay. Let me get this milk and start. All right. Continue verse 13, please. But everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. One has to get used to obeying Allah Hayyam to be skilled in the words of righteousness because it takes doing his will to know his doctrine. 
John 7 and 17, please. If any man would do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. That is the facts we actually have to do to understand and grow. Continuing Sirach 1 and 26, please. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. So there will come a time when we will get skilled through the exercise of practicing to listen intently and obey. We will know how to discern good and evil as an adult who is able to take in meat, having Elohim's wisdom with us because we're keeping his commandments. Can you read Hebrews 5 and 14, please? But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. See how you have to use our senses to work righteousness, to grow in discerning good and evil through experience. We're having in the learning process of serving faith by trusting the angel of righteousness. That's the only way to actually grow. You have to do it. You have to practice it. Just as a child, you give a child milk. When that child gets fat, what's the process that comes next? It wants to start moving, start walking. Then it has to exercise. It has to crawl. It has to get on, get sit up and get moving. And though it falls, the child doesn't give up. It continues to work. Get some more milk to get nourished. <laughs> Back to work to get this thing right. And eventually that child walks. And eventually that child runs. <laughs> so you can see the process. It hasn't changed for us in the faith. We actually have to do. We have to exercise, take our experiences and get back up. Knowing that Ahaya upholdeth us with his hand. Just as a father, he sees the child fall. He's going to extend his hand to help him up. Or he might catch him before he completely falls, actually, because he doesn't want him to get hurt. And he'll set him back up. So you always know in the process, as faults come, things happen. Know that Allah didn't let you fall all the way because he gave you opportunity to repent and come out of it. So keep working. Well, that um, milk, the sincere milk of the word, usually when you have a baby, um, the baby is not able to consume meat because it's not able to digest it or, or it's not able to, um, to intake it. So it drinks milk until it gets to a... a a place where it is big enough and able to actually consume meat where it's able to actually digest it and it's able to actually swallow it down. So that's actually is a good parallel where when we do get of full age, as it says, then we are able to swallow that meat and we are able to digest it. I mean, we're able to, to, to receive it and we're able to understand it whereas we wouldn't understand it being a babe and it would cause us to maybe go off or maybe choke and go off of the path and be deterred from following the journey and following the gospel so definitely a good parallel yeah, thank you Thank you for that, Brother Zachwa. No problem. In building, to come from a child starting with milk to get to meat, we got to start somewhere. Can you read 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, please? When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So we can overcome the childish things of the sins of youth and become men and women strong in faith, able to listen well, to discern good and evil. Yet we have to become children first in humbling ourselves, being sincere to ask the questions we need to understand ourselves. 
and understand as children, which are simplistic, they take things for what they are. They don't go to the right or left of what's being told unto them. And they don't go into their own imaginations because their child, their empty slates, taking understanding from their parents and agreeing with that understanding as true. And we have to be as such to grow from our childish ways to become men and women in faith. So let's practice listening well, not being eager, hasty, or in passions with vain words to trick ourselves, keeping that silence and tranquility with gentleness, speaking truth in our hearts to hear the words of our Allahayim. And let's not be ashamed of the gospel to show our moderation by doing these necessary things to live by faith truly. Can you read Philippians 4 and 5, please? Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Knowing the Lord is at hand, let's work with him in mind. Be mindful of man-pleasing or respect of persons and vainglory to get hasty or anxious in either way to turn us from being moderate for the sake of men. Let's not take care for how we will look or what folks may think of us because we have to take our time and inquire of the deity to be kept from evil because his spirit is looking upon us and searching our inner man. All right. Can you read first Clement 21 verse two to five, please? For he saith in a certain place, the spirit of the Lord is a lamp searching the closets of the belly. Let us see how near he is, and how that nothing escapeth him of our thoughts or our devices which we make. It is right, therefore, that we should not be deserters from his will. Let us rather give offense to foolish and senseless men who exalt themselves and boast in their arrogance of their words than to Elohim. Sometimes we just have to hold our peace. Not being ashamed of the gospel to do what we must to live by faith truly, trusting and obeying the angel of righteousness only. So as he said, sometimes we're going to have to give offense to people that unfortunately don't understand the spiritual warfare we're in. So their senses aren't keen to it and they're not wise in how the devil operates. So they may not see what you're doing as the right thing to do, but you understand and you know that we have to do all things unto Allahim and do everything to please our neighbor unto his good for edification, even if that means offending him while doing the right thing in humility. So there be instances where you just have to ask for a moment, where you just have to tell the truth. I don't know what to say. I need some time, you know, or not say anything at all, depending on the situation waiting on Allah Hayyam to be sure not to offend him. All right. Well, let me pray about it. That's always a good one. Say, hey, let me pray about it. I mean, it's good to understand. You, you should understand people, which really helps you to have compassion on them. That if somebody is rushing you or they are forcing you, then you should know that there's fornication at work that they have a desire that they're trying to fulfill and they need it to fulfill it through you. So they're pushing and forcing you to hurry up because it's something that they desire. So it's always good to understand that. So you can say, hey, I have to wait on Allah. I have to inquire. I have to, I have to get guidance so that they can understand. And, and it's only your job to give them understanding. It's not your job to change them. So after you give the understanding, you need to stand in what it is that you need to do in confidence to do it unto Allah Hayyam. Confidence and humility. Not to get into, not to get puffed up. <laughs> no, it's not about being puffed up. It's about being confident to know what you're supposed to do. Like if I know I need to inquire, I'm confident that I need to inquire. There's no pride that I need to inquire it's because I know I need to to make sure that I'm doing what's right so definitely um, you, you should always have humility 
So I'm not saying that, but that wasn't the sentiment. I'm with you. I knew it wasn't. I just wanted to make sure we, it's you know, we, <laughs> we all be clear. <laughs> confidence doesn't mean yeah. pride, though, but I, I'm with you. Yeah, confidence in that I am. That you're doing the right thing. And in that confidence is along what Paul is talking about in Romans 1 and 16, please. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of Allah unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That's the confidence. It's just not being ashamed of the gospel to do what's needed and to do what's right, knowing that it's the power of Allah for our salvation. All right, let me continue when you're ready, please. For therein is the righteousness of Allah revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So you see how that's truly living by faith. Being confident, unashamed to do what's right to Allah in every instant. All right. So let's exercise our faith by listening well to obey Allah Hayyam through his messengers. All right. You good there? We can keep going. Yeah, I'm good. Now, we got to understand of his messenger, the angel of righteousness. All right. Now, let's be wise as serpents, understanding when is the devil's messenger speaking or inclining us. Can you read Hermas, Mandate 6, chapter 2, verse 4, please? Now see the works of the angel of wickedness also. First of all, he is quick-tempered and bitter and senseless. That's how he acts in his temperament and mindset. So if we catch ourselves in the same ways, it's time to take a moment and regroup. All right? Continue, please. And his works are evil. Overthrowing the servants of Allah. He does evil, so learn the law to know what he's working against. All right? Continue, please. Whenever then he entereth into thy heart, know him by his works. How shall I discern him, sir? I reply, I know not. Listen, saith he. When a fit of angry temper or bitterness comes upon thee, know that he is in thee. Don't ever think it's a good spirit or angel that is in us when these feelings come in so we don't lie to ourselves. There's a difference between the zeal of Allah but a fit of angry temper or bitterness come upon us, know that he's in us. That's just the truth. All right. Notice the first thing he does is gets us in bad feelings. So when in them, he is in us and we need to calm down and silence our minds, praying and seeking after Allah Hayim's judgments to have rest and be at peace in mind. If we don't catch it or resist it when we are in the feelings, his evil desires are going to start arising in covetousness. All right? Understand him well. First comes the emotions, and then comes... Here we go, Zakwa, please. Then the desire of much business, and the costliness of many viands, and drinking bouts, and of many drunken fits, and of various luxuries which are unseemly, and the desire of women, and avarice, and haughtiness, and boastfulness, and whatsoever things are akin and like to these. When then these things enter into thy heart, know that the angel of wickedness is with thee. He is the angel of wickedness, so he arises desire to help wickedness keep us in our feelings. Or it can be vice versa where wickedness projects some fearful thought or anxiety causing thought or a thought that makes us lose confidence 
And then the angel of wickedness comes with the fit of emotions about it. And his desires arise to make us covet and get distracted from listening to obey Allah Hayyam in all our thoughts. Can you read Wisdom of Solomon 17 and 11, please? For wickedness condemned by her own witness is very timorous, and be impressed with conscience always forecasteth grievous things. She feels guilty conscience being fearful, easily anxious, hypersensitive to criticism, and lacking confidence because she knows she isn't doing right, condemned of her own witness that she is wicked. So she compensates by projecting grievous things to stay where she is because her fears helps keep her from reasoning to come to the truth of things and take accountability. Can you read verse 12, please? For fear is nothing else but the betraying of the succors which reason offereth. So she projects unto us thoughts that cause fear or anxiety or lack of confidence to believe in Allah Hayyam. So we can't take our time and reason on truth objectively without getting emotional. Then when vexed, we start coveting as the angel of wickedness is in us, getting us vexed helping lead us to desires to act upon. Fear doesn't help you see things logical. Is there something you want to touch on in regards to any of this, Akwa? Uh, you go ahead. I'll put that in parentheses. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> It's okay. Um, yeah, fear doesn't help us see things logical. Um, it, it, fear causes anxiety. And when you're in your emotions, just like we're reading about now, when you're in your emotions, you don't, you don't succor with reason. You don't actually take the time to actually reason things out, to actually see if things are actually logical or to actually understand the truth of the matter. Because fear is anxious, it's hasty, and it causes you not to actually view things the right way. So that's why when Allah said he didn't give us the spirit of fear, but a sound mind. And in First Timothy, you can see what he was actually talking about. That, that fear actually causes us not to be able to see things logical, which a sound mind actually does allow us to see things logical. So that was the, that was what that was about. Okay. Thank you. Praise Allah. Amen. So understanding the angel of wickedness, he gets us in our feelings. And wickedness herself is projecting to get or keep us in our feelings. And when he gets in, he arises desire. Gets us coveting, get us wanting, get us out of contentment. If you haven't watched that lesson, grab a hold of contentment. Please check it out. Understanding how he works. What are we commanded to do in Hermas Mandate 6, chapter 2, verse 3? I mean, chapter 2, verse 6, please. Do thou therefore, recognizing his works, stand aloof from him, and trust him in nothing, for his works are evil and inexpedient for the servants of Allah Hayyam. Here then thou hast the working to both the angels, understand them, and trust the angel of righteousness. We talked about Chimaro. We have to guard and protect. We have to actually be attentive to ourselves, recognizing whose works are in us or who's trying to lead us somewhere and stand aloof from everything that comes from the angel of wickedness and any spirit of the devil so that we can actually serve Allah Hayim. Notice the angel of wickedness works in fits of emotion and arousal of desires while the angel of righteousness is gentle and tranquil just talking gently the right things to do 
So this is why we entreat everyone into curbing our desires, resisting bad emotions, and work on temperance and listening well to be able to hear the angel of righteousness and obey Allah Hayyim. Really hope it helps grasp getting in our passions and being easily too good in our passions. It's not from Allah Hayyim and it's not helping us get where we need to be. Be strong to listen well, to understand these spirits as they don't want us to take in the truth and understand them because by keeping us from doing so, they can keep refreshing themselves in us. Can you read Matthew 13 and 19 to 23, please? When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. If pride is at work, not willing to listen unless we understand, the devil will snatch the word away. This is where we don't receive it if it ain't something we understand ourselves or we already thought ourselves. The devil helps take the word away. All right. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. This is when we hear it happily, yet we don't implement what we hear, so we can be rooted in the faith, being hearers, but not doers. All right? If you continue. That please. was interesting. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, you just read in Matthew 13 and 19. It said he heard the word. He didn't understand it. And the wicked one came and took what was sown in his heart. Right? Then when you go to verse 20, it said the same as he that heareth the word. And with joy received it. So it was, it sounded good, but it never entered into their heart. It said, Yet hath he not root in himself, but dure for a while. So because it never entered into their heart, they did it, but they weren't doing it with their whole heart. Yeah, which isn't actually doing it. Right. And this is why when you go to the next verse, it's going to make more sense. Okay. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Go ahead. When he gets tested, like something actually has to try him to see if, if he or she actually is keeping it. Um, Like, because the the commandment says you have to keep the commandment. That means you hold it dear. You hold it close to you and do the commandment. So you actually have to, it actually have to enter into your heart to keep it. And then to do the commandment, you actually put forth your hands to the work to actually do it. When tribulation or persecution arise, like, um, like let's say for Peter, for example, when Peter, when they were asking Peter, Hey, you weren't you with him? And Peter was like, no. Like, by and by, he was offended. He's like, uh-uh. Like, I, I don't have anything to do with it. Like, when they're tried to see where they truly stand or whether it's truly in their heart, they leave off from it because they're not truly doing it for the right reason. They're not doing it because of Allah Hayyam. They're doing it because of how they may seem, or how they may look. So when it comes time to actually be tested to see if their heart is truly in it, 
they don't they they're offended by it they cast it away hmm. it's understanding mate it's right because the man pleasing right and they received it at first because in that environment that's what's the thing to do but then when going out into the world to be tried the man pleasing and respect of persons is still an indulgence so we're gonna do whatever it takes to please men in that moment right and then they're offended of the good thing that they received <laughs> they're offended of it so it's like like you cast it away from you like uh-uh that ain't gonna get me what i want right now that's not gonna get me the attention i want and it's not gonna make me be accepted so i gotta cast that away i'm offended by that yes sir uh... And that happens because he hath no root in himself. Remember, the seed is the word. The deed is the root. So by not doing the deeds and implementing the commandments and actually practicing them, it shows it, the word truly didn't enter our heart because we didn't bring forth the works of it. And by not doing the works sincerely, it's always known by the fact that when we're tried, we will get offended and turn away from the law. Understand it just for honest self-assessment to know where we really are and know what we're really doing. So we can, if we got to go back to ground zero, go back to ground zero and get the understanding we need. Get the understanding, implement the things that Allah Hayyam has shown we need to do to grow in whatever area we see we are still getting offended at because of some pleasure. So, our lack of true faith by works, practicing what we learn, is shown by what we do when we are tried to learn where we truly are to make changes for the better. Let's see the other listening situation, please, in verse 22. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. This is where we hear, but fornication uses the worldly affairs to distract us from doing the works of faith. As our love is for the dainties and riches of this world, so we don't bear fruit. But he that receives seed into the good ground, if he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Notice the different yielding of fruits because Allah has his place where he wants every person to get to. That's why we don't compare ourselves amongst ourselves. Everybody has their lot with Allah Hayyam, right? We just want to be in Allah Hayyam's lot, <laughs> all right? Take heed too. The seed on the good ground is he that heareth the word. Remember, hearing comes from the word of Allah Hayyam, or by the word of Allah Hayyam. So Yache makes him hear and understandeth it from Allah Hayyam comes understanding. So know that the humility of a person that actually gets the seed on good ground understands it's all about Allah Hayyam and yields themselves unto Allah Hayyam in the first place. And when things are going well, Understanding is coming forth. We're actually hearing and understanding. There's no glory about it. Because we know it's just Allah Hayyam doing it. This person, they're going to bear fruit. As he heard and understood from Allah Hayyam who gave it to him. Seeing he worked as a babe to learn faith and obedience. Through listening with the intent to yield himself unto Allah Hayyam. And bring forth fruit from his labors. He's not lazy trying to eat off of another's table. He's actually doing the work himself to eat. 
That's essential. I got something. Got something. All right, go ahead. I noticed the the one who received it by the wayside and the one who received it in the stony places, they didn't understand the word. They heard it. One received it with joy, but they didn't actually understand it to actually um to actually um um investigate the deity. because if you just hear it only it becomes head knowledge but if you hear it and understand it and understand how to apply it then you actually can bring forth fruit What if it kind of laughing? I didn't know what was going on. I just heard <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because we always end up back at this same point. <laughs> understanding is to depart from evil. <laughs> so you right. have to do it <laughs> to get the understanding. <laughs> you actually have to do it. There's no other way that I just heard it and, ooh, I understand. That was a good lesson. Like, I got it. No, you got to actually go do it. That's going to show the understanding. That's, that's how you... <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> now you <laughs> see it. <laughs> yeah, because the stony places, that one right there, <laughs> it said, um, but he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word and the known with joy receiveth it. So he heard it, he received it. It's like, yo, this is good, right? But he never understood it. He hath not rooted himself, but dur for a while. So it's like, I'm I'm trying, like I don't I, I heard you, but I don't really understand. But in my hastiness, I'm gonna go ahead and go off without having the full understanding. And go and try to do it, endure for a while, and try to do it. But when tribulation or persecution comes, the actually where I actually have to be founded and standing upon the rock of Yahche, understanding and understanding everything to be able to hold fast to it, I fall away. Yes, sir. Because he didn't have the root in himself, and he was because he wasn't actually doing it. He didn't understand it enough to do it. Right. He heard the word and ran off. Yeah. He thought he had it. It was gone. Yeah. The hastiness. You got to understand. Hopefully this is helping you understand. You got to take your time and really understand what you're doing. What you're getting involved in. You know. It's great. You hear it. The edification is great, man. Praise Allah and for it. Don't forget what we're called on to, though. You got to sit down and meditate on what you heard and how you're going to implement it and see if you really know what to do. And if not, reach out to your counselor and talk about it to see what to do, to go forward with protocols because you're setting that hedge about the spirit of Allah and knowing what you're really getting involved in. And then you go forth with that understanding and practice. Mistakes may come. It's a part of the journey. You got to learn. But you're learning with understanding so that you can actually have root and be strong. All right. You know, you have to go through experiences because it says... In um, Luke, Luke something, it tells that them on a good ground and then to bring forth fruit with patience. In, in, a, in an honest and good heart, bring forth fruit, fruit with patience. You got to. That's a key detail to the heart. This is Luke 8 and 15. <laughs> but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. 
so you can see the two variables that are needed. You got to be honest with yourself and patience with yourself to know I have need of help and I don't understand everything. So let me sit down and make sure I got it and be patient and not just hasty to go off in the excitement of what I just heard. And then when I make sure I got it, check with counsel and make sure I understand it and how to apply it. Okay, I got what I needed. Now, let me go forth and practice until I get strong in it and have patience with myself and be honest with myself. And because I'm being honest with Allah, I am by doing so. If I fall, confess. If I say I am keep falling the same thing, I need to go back to counsel because I'm missing something. There's a variable that I didn't get. Go find out. Get what I need to make sure I can actually do this and bring forth fruit. Anything else, Aqua? No, I'm good. Okay. So knowing the devil and his family efforts to stop us from listening and obeying Allah Hayyam, in an honest and a good heart with patience. Listen well to what Christ says, to hold on to it for truth, to keep us focused and increase our faith by his words. Can you read Matthew 5, verse 17 to 20, please? Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. The righteousness that will not in any case get us into the kingdom is hypocrisy. Lord willing, we're going to talk about that somewhere down the line. Continue, please, in Matthew 23, verse 28. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Remember, Allah is a spirit searching within us. So even if we put on a good outward show, we still shall in no case enter the kingdom if we are hypocrites or entertaining iniquity within or trying to hide our iniquity. Can you read Luke chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, please? In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in the closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Nothing is hid from Allah Hayyam, so we might as well just be honest. <laughs> and just do the work genuinely to be obedient to the faith from within, man. <laughs> Right. Just take it for what it is. It gets us out of the man pleasing and the respect of person and the fair man, like to just really keep that before our face. Ain't nothing hid from him. What can man do besides have an opinion about you? Yeah. That's it. Your life is gonna continue going regardless. And know if that matters so much of what man thinks of you, that vainglory 
and man pleasing respect this persons is something to take heed to and get understanding of it within yourself and reason and see why you desire it and get to the root of that matter to come out of it. Mm -hmm. Can you read Luke 21, verse 32 and 33, please? Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. It's like his words are more precious and essential to take heed to as they live. Mark 4, verse 23 and 24, please. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. He wants us to take heed to ourselves and what we're hearing. Being our Lord, he understands the effects of what we hear and what it does. Is this saying, with what measure you meet in yielding yourself unto Allah, I am, it will be yielded unto you? And if we hear and yield in ourselves, we're going to be given more fruits? Yeah, the more you hear, the more you can bring forth fruit. So if you hear more righteousness, then you're going to bring forth righteousness. If you hear more iniquity, you're going to bring forth iniquity. Because whatever, just like you said, it's what you take heed to. Or what, at the beginning of the lesson, you said, um, um, what was the word? Um, yield. Yield. What you yield to is what you're going to bring forth. So if I yield, if I hear iniquity and I yield to it because I want to hear it, what am I going to bring forth? If I hear righteousness and I hear and I yield to it, what am I going to bring forth? You know, so you can, you can okay. understand it. So good things within your souls that you may have it in your life. Mm -hmm. right. So if you sow evil things, you shall reap every trouble and affliction. <laughs> You might said it. Understand. That's another sign. You see you're going through a lot. Sit down and take some time to see what you're taking heed to. What you're sowing in yourself. Whose words you're more swayed towards. You know? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Sackler. Yeah, you have to definitely be vigilant of what you're attracted to. Like, if if certain things attract you then that is a clear distinction that hold on okay if it's good things that I'm attracting to praise Allah if I'm attracted to bad things then I there's something that I have to deal with or 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 see within myself to be able to deal with to find the root of it like Kostafo was talking about but you want to figure it out you want to figure it out to actually deal with it so that it doesn't have place to dwell there where you keep bringing forth bad works or it starts multiplying bad works because it starts bringing forth other spirits and attaching to it because it's still being able to sit there and dwell and be idle. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Taking the time to uncover that thing and find out what it is and not let it be hid is really a work of Allah Hayyam because even Yache said nothing is going to be hid. <laughs> Allah Hayyam don't hide no iniquity. He don't let no iniquity just sit there. He makes sure that he root it out. So knowing who you're working for when we take the time to sit down and understand ourselves and deal with whatever it is that's keeping us from doing what's right. Thank you for that too. That was a great um, 
angle and perspective of understanding what's going on and what to do. Praise Allah. Hmm. Amen. Beware of the lies that play against the truth to deceive us as we're learning. Okay. Jeremiah 23 and 26, please. How long shall it be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of deceit of their own heart. Verse 30. Please. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith Ahiah, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. So they are lying prophets working for Satan to help steal the words of Ahiah from his children. Lord willing, we be amongst those. Continue verse 28, please. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith Ahiah? There are also those whom Ahiah gave his word to speak faithfully, whom, if we listen to and obey, it will break the stronghold of idols. As he says, what is the chaff to the wheat? All right. Continue, please. Verse 29. It's also a work that if Elohim sends you dreams, to just tell the dreams, you don't have to have the gift to interpret them. Just having a dream and telling a dream is a work in itself. Hey, man. <laughs> Praise Allah for that. Good to know. Because Allah may send a dream and then you may go to whoever it is to interpret it or you may tell it to somebody and they may have the understanding because the dream may have not been for you. The dream may have been for someone else. You see what I'm saying? So it's you don't know how Allah works. You just have to do the work. It takes away the glory of everything because a person can get lifted up in dreams right. to keep them to themselves or only tell parts that they want to tell for their own glory as opposed to simply just doing the work in humility and telling the dream in humility for the sake of Allah. Hayyam. It's not my word like as a fire, saith Ahaya, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned from them their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Now understanding what the work is with the dreams, and then whomever he gives the interpretation, let him speak his word faithfully to just give the interpretation, not speak according to your, your own personal opinion. Look what his word does. When the important, and you so this is to see the importance of just telling the dream because we don't know what Allah am wills in it and what he's sending it for because it's not my word like as a fire, saith Ahaya, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. He's sending word to help somebody. It may not even be you who had the dream, but it's to help somebody. And by getting that interpretation, it helps somebody, whoever the dream is for, to stand in his counsel and turn away from their evil and the evil of their doings. So by holding that dream for yourself, you're either keeping yourself in evil, serving idols, because they're the one that's leading you to keep it to yourself in certain instances, unless Allah I am bid you not to reveal it and such. And it's also the idols helping somebody else not come out of their struggle because that dream was needed to help understand what Allah I am had for someone to help turn them. But keeping it to yourself is stopping the work. And of course, Allah is going to do his work anyway. He's going to help whomever he's helping. But you're taking away your opportunity to partake in his labors. All right. Now, as for his word in general, when it comes to listening to false prophets or true prophets, 
true prophets, they have a dream. They're just going to tell it. And whomever gets the interpretation, they're just going to tell it faithfully. And that word Allah Hayyams give is going to help destroy the works of idols. As his word is like a hammer that breaketh the rocks in pieces. And when anyone hears the word coming from his faithful prophets and stands in his counsel, you know it's the counsel of Allah Hayyam because they're going to hear his words that were given and they're going to actually turn from their evil ways and their doings. All right? That's the simple dichotomy of the words from Allah Hayyam and the words that are not from Allah Hayyam. All right? So no Allah Hayyam's words. Did you have anything else before I keep going? No, I'm good. Go ahead, Kaz. Okay. So no Allah Hayyam words are spiritual and can destroy the hold of evil spirits, causing us to turn from our evil ways and doings that refresh idols. So if you notice you're getting distracted in various ways from listening to the word, it's an attack as the idols don't want us to hear to lose their place in us. And when they have place to pervert us, it's shown by our unwillingness to hear the law and be corrected either by men or the angel of righteousness. Can you read Isaiah 30 and 9, please? That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of Ahia. That's straightforward as to who we are in the sight of Allah Hayyam if we won't hear the law. We're lying children. Also, we will not want to hear teachings that speak right things to bring us out of our evils, but rather we will have pleasure in teachings that are just what we want to hear or deceitful words that cover our self-indulgences. Continue verse 10, please. Which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Tell me what I want to hear, or tell me something that's not going to affect my comfort zone. All right, continue, please. Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. So taking all this in, also, the response to being told the truth would be the desire that the speaker doesn't keep the commandments either, so that Christ wouldn't be with him as he is separate from sinners. So the spirits at work know Christ is righteous, so they want us to see someone serving him fall away so that Christ wouldn't work in the man to convert souls by doing and speaking right things so that they may believe and repent. Malachi 2 and 6, please. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity. And did turn many away from iniquity. So that's a faithful person in Allah Hayyam, A faithful person to listen to. The law will be in his mouth. There's no guile in his lips. No iniquity. And he's going to walk with Allah Hayyam in peace and equity. Humbly. In long suffering. Serving him. And what he's actually doing. And when he speaks. is going to turn many away from iniquity. Because they're actually seeing Allah Hayyam. And our Lord Christ in him. So take heed to what we hear. And how we hear it. And if we are having trouble listening to the words of Allah Hayyam, Know it's an attack. And we need to do what's commanded to come out of it. So and down. Sit, be in awe. Stand still. Sit upon your bed. Commute with your own heart. Come to that silence and purity of your heart. So you can understand how to hold fast the will of Allah Hayyam. Praying and seeking his judgments to have peace of mind. Right? Also be mindful of seeking for faults in others and wanting to see others stumble out of the way 
as it's the evil spirits assisting in those thoughts, hoping for Christ the Holy One to cease from working in folks by judging others, speaking evil of them, rather than the Christian perspective of not judging anyone, but judging ourselves to make sure we don't set a stumbling block or occasion to fall before anyone else. That essentially is saying when you're listening to the edification, when you're reading the scriptures, focus on yourself. Look for what can help you grow. Look for what you're doing to see your faults. That is a great work because the law is spiritual as it's going to help you come out of it and the idols come out of you because they don't want to hear it. But if you want to hear it, it creates division. All right. If you don't let them distract you with projecting on what somebody else has done or seeing everybody else's faults in it, but just seeing yourself is going to really help separate from them. And keep the law as we're about to read <laughs> James 4 and 11, please. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. So if your thoughts are inclined unto judging and critiquing what everybody else is doing, you're a judge of the law, not an actual doer. And that's a fact to have in mind for ourselves to remember, hey, I'm not a judge. Focused on myself. If somebody's doing something, may Allah prosper and give them per perfect prosperity. May Allah strengthen them. But the focus is on you. As these spirits just want you off in some thought about something else that ain't got nothing to do with you or it lifts you up and exalts you so that you don't actually have to listen to change and learn what they're doing in you to change. I want to add a scripture. Okay. Um, first Peter chapter four, verse 15. It says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Busybody in other men's matters is G244. And it means overseeing others' affairs. That is meddler. Busybody in other men's matters. One who takes the supervision of affairs pertaining to others and in no wise to himself. A meddler in other men's affairs. Thank you. So it's a, spirit, it's a busybody spirit. Mm -hmm. It's good to know what spirit it is to pray for that deliverance with understanding. Mahayim, help me. Keep me from the busybody. Keep me from the spirits, the, the devil. Help me focus on your work. Help me hear and understand. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Continue Romans 14 and 10 to 13, please. But why doest thou judge thy brother? Or why doest thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to Allah I am. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to Allah I am. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Hmm. Remember we talked about Allah sees everything, so we might as well just be honest and keep him in mind. Remember also, he's the actual judge, not us. So let's not judge anyone, but as brothers in love, let's just make sure we're not putting an occasion to fall or stumble about before our brother. All right. And that takes us focusing on ourselves, not to put a stumbling block or occasion to fall in our brother's way. All right. 
because we're busy paying attention to what we're doing. <laughs> right. To make sure we ain't getting in his way. To stumble him in his journey to the kingdom. Because we're all running a race. If we're there paying attention to every person, we're going to be tripping them up. You know? Right. So let's not judge our brother to be a busybody in their business or to set them at naught to look down upon them like we're better than them or as if they're not going to get it. Because Allah does what he does. We don't know what he's going to do or what he's taking a person through to get them where he needs them to be. That's not telling us if we see something that our brother is doing wrong to not correct them because you don't want to suffer sin upon your brother, but you don't want to be trying to look and find things that they're doing wrong or, you know, trying to find ways to, to be the judge over them, trying to examine things and trying to look into things that they're doing or what they're, what they may be talking about, or if they're having a conversation with you, not trying to, to like pry in and go further, trying to, um, to project what went on and what may have happened in a situation. That's not what you want to do. But if you do see your brother fall somewhere, you see your brother do something and you're like, okay, I seen it. Let me speak about it. Cause I actually seen it. That's, that's different. It's not a judgment because you weren't looking for something. It just happened. And you are admonishing him as a friend, helping him as a brother. <clears throat> a great tool is when to just ask Allah Hayyam too, what would you have me to do? You may see a matter or notice something, get counsel. So I'm specifically work. talking about a brother though. It said, um, in your brother's way. You're right. Thank you. Yeah. There's a difference between somebody that's without the faith and somebody that's in it. Right. Thanks. Let's work on humility to listen and think with intent to judge ourselves in self-examination. So we can be pulled out of our indulgences and idolatry. And also praying Allah hain reveal our secret faults. Because David said it, who can understand his way? We have to actually have Allah hain show us. Right? And pray with the actual desire to see it, not just in vain words. Please. It's going to take our application of mind and humility in listening to get where we need to be. Can you read Surah 6, verse 32 and 33, please? My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. And if thou bow down thine ear, thou shalt be wise. We want it, we shall be taught. So it starts with desire. And if we put our mind to it, we're going to gain prudence in understanding how to operate because we're going to start acting on it, what we're understanding. And if we love to listen, not loving to talk and not loving to be heard, but love to listen as a child, we're going to actually receive understanding because we're less focused on talking and being heard, but we're focused on hearing the angel of righteousness to receive understanding so we can keep from evil. And all that is possible if we humble ourselves and bow down our ear, not operating or listen as if we already know, or listening half-heartedly or not attentively because we feel we already know. Or we already got it. But if we bow down our air, sincerely knowing who we are and agreeing with who we truly are, 
to know we need that help and just listening, we're going to eventually be wise because we're listening with the right intent and desire. If you don't have anything, Sirach 51, verse 12 to 19, please. For thou savest me from destruction and deliverest me from the evil time. Therefore will I give thanks and praise thee and bless thy name, O Lord. See that this person went through the process and understood who actually delivered them from their shortcomings and their weaknesses. All right. They took the time to do it. <laughs> Giving thanks to Allah, I am knowing he really is the one that actually did it. All right, continue, please. When I was yet young, forever I went abroad. I desired wisdom openly in my prayer. I prayed for her before the temple and would seek her out even to the end. I bowed down mine ear a little and received her and got much learning. So he humbled himself just a bit, that little humility, because the muscles that you start somewhere, eventually it's going to grow into a lot. All right. Continue, please. I profited therein. Therefore will I ascribe glory unto him that giveth me wisdom. He realized the profit he got in walking in the commandments and fruits of the spirit, getting that spiritual treasure and gave glory to the person who gave it. The father, Allah, of all. All right, continue, please. For I purpose to do after her and earnestly I follow that which is good. So shall I not be confounded. Earnestly following after it. It was sincere. It wasn't half-hearted. It wasn't with an ulterior motive. It was generally what he wanted and he purposed to go after it. So, so you see, he can't be confounded because of his sincerity. Continue, please. My soul hath wrestled with her, and in my doings I was exact. I stretched forth my hands to the heaven above and bewailed my ignorances of her. His soul wrestled with her. So it was a learning process. He had to take the time to get on her side only. And in that process, he was exacting his doings because he's learning. Hold on, I got to pay attention to what I'm doing to make sure I'm actually doing it on her side. And any time something came up that wasn't on Allah Hayim's side, he made sure he prayed and confessed his fault, confessing his ignorances. That kept him from being confounded to keep working. Confess, get back to work. Find solutions. Be exact to implement the right things to do what Allah Hayim requires. We got to be honest and sincere in that patience with that good heart, with no deceit to cover sins, but genuinely looking for understanding of our own faults, not other shortcomings, so we can understand ourselves and confess our sins, get an understanding of them and working on forsaking them to be worthy of the Holy Spirit. Can you read Proverbs 28 and 13, please? He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. That's the plainness of it. We want mercy in this journey so we can actually attain. And we want mercy to actually be strengthened to do it because it's only from Allah Hayim it can happen. But we won't confess and forsake what we're doing by being honest and getting the help we need to forsake it. We're still covering our sins and we're not going to prosper. To get mercy, you have to confess and forsake. It's not just saying I did wrong or just saying I'm sorry, but it's actually doing the work to forsake the deed that I did to show Allah Hayyam that I'm actually sorry about it and to gain his mercy. And this is all a work of humility. 
James 4 and 10, please. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. So you're going to come up out of it if you do the first part to humble ourselves to Allah Hayyam. So let's humble ourselves and get understanding of these spirits of Satan to know their works in us so we can detect them in ourselves, confess them, and get insight to be aware and overcome them, being wise yet harmless as doves. Anything else in that segment, Zakwa? Um, no, I think it was good. Praise Allah. All right. Now, let's get into what's going on with the struggle to listen and to know what's affecting us and the spirits at work, to know what's going on and also pray for deliverance from them and valor to be strong, not to give in to them. Let's start at Dan chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, please. For the spirit of anger encompasseth him with the net of deceit, and blindeth his eyes, and through lying darkeneth his mind, and giveth him its own peculiar vision. And wherewith encompasseth it his eyes with hatred of heart, so as to be envious of his brother. You see, anger uses hatred to encompass our view. Chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, please. And this is of the Testament of Gad. <clears throat> Beware, therefore, my children of hatred, for it worketh lawlessness even against the Lord himself. For it will not hear the words of its commandments concerning the loving of one's neighbor, and it sinneth against Allah. So hatred helps not listen to any of the words of Allah commandments with anger through hastiness of spirit. Can you read Testament of Gad chapter 4 verse 6, please? For the spirit of hatred worketh together with Satan through hastiness of spirit and all things to men's death. So hatred in Satan uses that hastiness of spirit in everything. Again, in everything. Right. <laughs> in everything. <laughs> to get us not to listen to anything from Allah Hayyam so we can sin. When in these spirits, we don't listen to Allah Hayyam or people treating them as enemies. Let's go back to see. We know what hatred did in the heart, and we know what hatred is used in the hastiness of spirit to help anger encompass the mind. Now let's see what anger does when it gets us there. Please, Testament of Dan, chapter 2, verse 2. But anger is blindness and does not suffer one to see the face of any man with truth. Put this in context towards Allah Hayyam, that we can't see him or who he truly is and the love he has for us by giving us his commands to save us through anger blinding us. All right, continue, please. But though it be a father or a mother, he behaveth towards them as enemies. They make us treat the father and mother in heaven as enemies. Continue, please. And also your physical parents as well. Yes, sir. You make it seem like they're against you when they're trying to correct you or they're trying to help you. But because of your desire, anger has a place where you feel justified through the anger that you're right. And you behave towards your parents as enemies. That's true. Though it be a brother, he know of him not. So not only do anger, using hatred and hastiness of spirit, turn us to treat Allah Hayyam, our parents in heaven as enemies, it also turns us from obeying the commands that we may know our Lord and brother, Yache Christ, as well, so that his voice is foreign to us so that we don't listen to it. 
And we will listen to our brother in the faith as well. Yes. Exhorting us according to the words of Yate. Though it be a prophet of the Lord, he disobeyeth him. We wouldn't give heed to obey him. You're right. Though a righteous man, he regardeth him not. Nor regard him to take the time to listen to his words. Though a friend, he doeth not acknowledge him. You can see the hatred and anger that helps it not listen to anything that comes from the Lord. And anger actually uses hatred of heart to blind us, to not suffer us to see anyone with truth, to listen to them, treating them, and Allah Hayyam as our enemies. That's an attack on our perspective to help us not listen. There's also an attack in our body too by other spirits so we'll understand this to understand what's affecting us when we're having um, trouble listening we see an attack on our mind to distract us from paying attention let's look at what's happening in our body as well Fornication and lust helps not to listen or pay attention as well because they also resent the words of holiness to listen to them. Uh, Testament of Judah, chapter 17, verse 2 and 3, and then jump to verse 5, please. Testament of Judah, chapter 17, verse 2. Beware, therefore, my children of fornication and the love of money, and hearken to Judah your father, for these things withdraw you from the law of Elohim, and blind the inclination of the soul, and teach arrogance, and suffer not a man to have compassion upon his neighbor. He hearkeneth not to a prophet when he speaketh, and resenteth the words of holiness. So fornication and lust helps not to listen to the words from Elohim? So they're assisting, right? They're assisting in anger, hatred, and hastiness. And they help us to get offended by the words of holiness when we do hear them. Fornication also gets into our body, senses, and mind to help distract us from listening with tactics like busying ourselves or being unable to sit still, distracting ourselves in some way, whether in our thoughts or making us think we need to be doing something to get us away from actually paying attention to listen to the words of holiness to root out the fornication and lust from entering into our hearts. Can you read Reuben 3 and 3, please? First, the spirit of fornication is seated in the nature and in the senses. So, see... She can get us moving around or looking around, trying to get some kind of sensory pleasure or feeling distracting us from listening to the words of holiness. You got to watch her in that. And also in our minds, you got to watch her distracting us with the cares of this world so that we won't listen to the words of Allah Hayyam either. But when we do listen, we can't comprehend it because of the distractions and not keeping the commandments. Can you read Hermas Mandate 10, chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, please? Mm -hmm. So pretty much fornication operates in the mind and in the flesh. So definitely be mindful of it. I love how you say that so simply after. <laughs> That's my job. That's my job, man. <laughs> Hermes Mende 10, chapter 1, <laughs> verse 4. Listen, saith he, those who have never investigated concerning the truth, nor inquired concerning the deity, but have merely believed and have been mixed up in business affairs and riches and heathen friendships and many other affairs of this world, 
as many, I say, as devote themselves to these things, comprehend not the parables of the deity. For they are darkened by these actions and are corrupted and become barren. You remember we were looking at the listening skills of we're not actually doing it to understand it. Even right, Anon terrible. with joy. Yeah, right. Anon with joy receiving it. Oh, mm -hmm. we merely believe. That sounds good. But I still have affairs in this world to take care of that I need to focus my energy on. So by being mixed up in those business affairs and riches and heathen friendships and many other affairs of this world, we didn't take the time to take that information that we believed and actually investigate concerning the truth, learning how to put it into action for ourselves and how to actually do it so we can have that understanding and actually keep from the evil and grow. Because we didn't take the time to do that, we can't comprehend what Allah Hayyam is talking about. And because we are darkened by what we're actually doing. And in time, though we believed merely, we actually become barren. We go into unbelief because we're not actually doing the works of faith because belief comes with action. All right. If you don't have anything, um, continue, please. As good vineyards, when they are treated with neglect, they are made barren by the thorns and weeds of various kinds. So men who after they have believed fall into many occupations which were mentioned before, lose their understanding and comprehend nothing at all concerning righteousness. For if they hear concerning the deity and truth, their mind is absorbed in their occupations and they perceive nothing at all. See how we get hindered from listening because our mind is absorbed in other occupations than the duty of keeping the commandments. This is where we hear it. Man, that sounds really good. But we're not meditating on it after. Our mind goes back to all the other things that we're desiring and concerned about in the world. We didn't take the time to actually do the work and, and get it into our heart. So we don't actually get understanding. We lose the bit of understanding we started to have. And we can't comprehend concerning righteousness because to understand righteousness, you actually have to do righteousness. As Christ said, if any man do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. So this is what's happening and what's holding us from listening and understanding. It starts in the mind, but it also affects the body, as we talked about. If you don't have anything, if you read Reuben 4 and 11, please. For if fornication overcomes not your mind, neither can Belier overcome you. If we're on it to keep the commandments, she nor the devil can overcome us with these spirits that help them. And that is talking about when we're here listening, or in any matter, we're not somewhere else. We're here intently for Allah Hayyam, listening, hoping in Allah Hayyam, and any thought that's deviating, trying to get, lead us to be a busybody or worry about this or worry about that, we understand and that's an attack now to know, hold on, I need to get back to that silence of mind and listen intently. Or in some cases, I have to ignore that so I can focus because I know it's a distraction to try to take me away from what I'm hearing. Right? Many, many of us need to take the time to take control of our thoughts. Because it says, for fornication overcomes not your mind. So the attack starts in the mind. And many of us aren't aware of it, so many of the things seep through or they pass through and they end up going into our hearts where Belier gets to overcome us because he can operate through us. But 
if we actually are on guard in our mind and in our thoughts and we're and we're actually um sifting or actually making sure we understand what's coming through and what we're actually allowing to go through then it actually creates a secure environment it's almost like having security but we're our own security Allah will enable us but we actually have to put in the work to actually be on guard and stand against these thoughts and not agreeing with these thoughts as if they're, they're our own instead standing against them and allowing the good thoughts to go through say okay i'm gonna allow that one to go through i agree with that one i'm gonna allow that one to go through i'll let that enter into my heart but if a thought comes and i need to stand against it and not be in agreement with it like Allah rebuke that thought rebuke that i don't want that i don't want that in my heart yache deliver me and remove that far from me like that's not the one i want so i'm not gonna let that enter into my heart and we have to be on guard enough to see when we feel off or when we feel something and we're because we may not be paying attention to our thoughts because we are having a thought. That's why we feel the way we feel because we actually have a thought that's going on. And but a lot of times we're not aware of the thought that's going on because we're so caught up in the moment of something that's happening that we're not aware that we actually have a thought at the same time that it's actually swaying us to feel the way that we're feeling, which fornication actually operates through the senses. So we actually get to see it. fornication comes to the mind and then it goes into the senses. So we actually get to truly see how it actually works because when you are going through a situation, your senses start coming. You feel either angry, you feel either um, um, upset or you feel, um, um, happy or you whatever it is it go it starts going through your senses so once you feel that hey i'm having i'm i'm feeling these senses okay what did i miss what did i what thought did i miss when that person said that to me what thought did i miss that made me feel the way i felt And that's where we have to be. That's what we have to be looking for. Okay, what thought got past me that that tried to enter into my heart? So Bellier cannot overcome me. Because once it enters into your heart, it's 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 hard to come out of it. You're gonna bring forth some sin because it already entered into your heart. And it may enter into your heart. And go away. That's why a lot of times when people say, I never struggled with this before. Like, no, because this is a, a new thought. The angel of wickedness brought forth a new thought unto you. You have to be on guard for every thought that the angel of wickedness brings to you. Not just the ones that you think that are, are a problem. Or the ones that you think are 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 not good you have to examine all the thoughts because the one that you may think is good may not be good and you may let that one in and you may let that one in over and over and over and then finally you come to the realization like hey that one's not good and it's like well it's a new thought it's not a new thought it's just a thought that you weren't aware of because you weren't at the place to understand what that, how that thought was impacting you. So it, it really, we really have to be vigilant of our thoughts and our mind and what we actually allow to go forth and agree with to enter into our heart. Amen. No, Amen. Thank you. It all goes in with the words we just covered, Chimaro and Ona. Right. <laughs> right. Beyond God, we're wards. We got to listen to the right thing to have security and show fidelity.
And if we're yeah, on it, uh, I'm about to go into it. Go ahead. You know I my setup, bar, my setup bar is coming. <laughs> <laughs> and if we do these things, Proverbs okay. Monday ten, verse chapter one, verse six, please. <laughs> but they that have the fear of Elohim and investigate concerning the deity and truth, and direct their heart towards the Lord, perceive and understand everything that is said to them more quickly. Because they have the fear of the Lord in themselves. For where the Lord dwelleth, there too is great understanding. Cleave therefore unto the Lord, and thou shalt understand and perceive all things. Amen. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Allah. If we have Christ in us strengthening to hear, we're going to actually have the fear of Allah in us. We're going to investigate the deity and truth doing the commandments. And he's going to help us direct our hearts to the Lord. And he's going to strengthen us to perceive and understand things more quickly. Because our desire and our intent is right. We actually want it. Because of our fear of Allah in us. So you see, you put the work in, start practicing. Remember, taste and see that Ahai is good. Get a taste of the milk. Start doing it. Start somewhere. Find something to start implementing. And you'll start to get understanding. When you see, hey, Ahai is keeping me from the evil. Maybe it may, may some be a small victory that he pulled me out of that hold faster than before. I didn't stay in that law long like I did before. Or oh, he showed me I was in the law so I can confess it. Take the small victories and see. This stuff works. Let me keep working. In everything, rejoice. Take every small, little, no matter how small a victory it is, rejoice in it. Be thankful. I, um, I talk with, <laughs> I remember I talked with a brother and I, I think I talked with you about it, Zach, or about how, like, if we could be thankful and everything, like, imagine if you had a child that, as they're learning, they're just rejoicing, or even a spouse, that they're just rejoicing as things come. They're thankful no matter what. They're, they're appreciative no matter what. How easy a relationship that would be. <laughs> how comfortable would it be to just flow along with them? And it's like that with Allah I am. As opposed to if you have a child that every time you point something out to them, they get in their feelings, they get down in the dumps, and they're ready to give up. Or they go down the dumps judging themselves and got to go, they go into a fit, you know. That's going to be a struggle trying to raise that child. It's hard to help them get up and walk if they sit down and pout every time they foul. But you see babies, they fall, they just getting their strength back to get right back at it. They, they kind of have that look like, oh, <laughs> they're like, oh, I fell. Okay, hold on. All right, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. All right, let me regroup. Let me get back to it. Let me see who all seen me. <laughs> Uh, and that shows their trust in their parent. They fall, they look to their parent. Because their parent, you know, there's that bond where they look to the parent to see if they're okay. Because they don't right. understand yet. They're waiting to see your reaction. Right. So if every time we fall, we look to Allah Hayyam to see what he would do. We know his temperament. He's long-suffering, cheerful. Okay. So I'm okay. Let me get up and work. <laughs> Let me get back on the horse. Just walk. And not trying to judge yourself. Because I think that's where the actual problem comes in. It's instead of when you fall, you look unto Alahayim and say, okay, Alahayim, I know I did wrong. I know I failed. If you want to, if you want to bring a, a punishment upon me, let it be thy will. And get back moving and focused on what you need to do instead of saying, oh, I fail. 
oh, okay, uh, I can't do nothing right. Now you're going to sit there and go through it and afflict yourself and punish yourself. That's not the right mindset. You're a judge. You're not a doer. And if we can come out of that judge mindset, we'll be better off and we'll be better servants and doers of the word. Amen. Amen. It helps to come out of that mindset by knowing it's not a competition. We're all in the race together. And everybody has their fruit that Allah wills for them to bring forth. So let's rejoice in our portion and our work. Amen. So, keeping the commandments will keep us from lust too, not just fornication. So you have fornication in the nature and senses, seeking to overcome our mind to get seated in our senses, yet lust is already in our body. So we have to also be attentive as it tries to distract us too. Watch out for lust in the body too as sin is using it to get us to act as well. Remember Joseph, how every evil of fornication and lust was thrown at him, but his heart didn't desire it. And we have to be the same. Not desiring what is against the commands of our Allah. As you know, Zach was talking about, it starts in a mind, so we got to have that mindset and perspective and heart to help not be overcome by anything. Um, if you don't have anything else, Reuben 4 and 9, please. For the Egyptian woman did many things unto him and summoned magicians and offered him love potions, but the purpose of his soul admitted no evil desire. Therefore the Allah and your fathers delivered him from every evil and hidden death. For fornication overcomes not your mind, neither can Belier overcome you. You see, the purpose of his soul is not to admit any evil desire. He was on guard. He was attentive, being security for the spirit of Allah Hayyam in him. Keeping Allah Hayyam before his face in everything. Not admitting anything that was contrary. So he was a good listener. He was paying attention. All right. And if there's something you don't understand, if you don't understand why you feel a certain type of way, go and pray and ask Allah for understanding so that he can give you the understanding of what's going on with you so that you can actually rid of it and cast it away and actually deal with it. It's great understanding. Here's Allah to do. Now, looking at lust, we got to watch for indication in our mind. But like we were saying, lust is already in our body from the sin of the beginning. So we got to watch out for this thing, period. Okay. Romans 7 and 5, please. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. M motions is G3804. It means something undergone that is hardship or pain, subjectively an emotion or influence, affection, affliction, motion, suffering. So sin has its own emotion and influences, and it's in our body seeking to get the power or convince us to give it the power to do so. The BDB definition is passion. So it also works in getting us in our feelings and doing something to influence us. And it actually influences us in our body. Um, can you read Romans 7 and 8, please? But sin, taking the Cajun by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. 
sin works lust in us to get us through the law. So they help distract us from it to continue their works. So we actually need the law to keep us from them. It's the common variable to keep us from all the works of the devil okay, and spirits. Can you read Romans 7 and 7, please? What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Allah I am forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. All right. But knowing the law, what happened? Verse 11 to uh, 12, please. For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. So you see, sin, knowing the law, it used it to influence us. And by that influence, it deceived us to cause us to die. And Zach was taught by in the lesson, when we, we were made to offer sacrifices of bulls and goats and such to help us understand when we sin, we're actually killing ourselves. And that's something to keep in perspective. We're taking our own life by sinning. Okay? But that law is holy. And the commandment is holy and just and good because by keeping it, it actually gives us life. It strengthens us in life. All right? Because it's spiritual. In verse 14 to 17, please. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So we got to take heed to what's going on in our body. As the truth is, the spirit of sin is in it, looking for opportunities to work the lust of it. All right. Continue Romans 6 and 12, please. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Notice we have to obey sin too. So it brings us right back to our listening ability and our listening skills. So it also wants us to give place to it in our bodies. So we got spirit seeking to take our minds and control our bodies. We've got to be mindful of just living by how we feel and not paying attention to ourselves in our minds and bodies as it would not let us live unto Allah if we just live by how we feel and think in oblivion to the war against us. When it comes to listening, fornication can attack the mind with thoughts of the worldly occupations to distract us from comprehending what's being said, or just not listening and resenting the words that is being given or said. Hatred and anger can be using hastiness to have our minds racing or being hasty not to listen, not regarding folks and treating them as enemies. And lust can be in our bodies, leading us to do things to help us be distracted from listening, along with fornication sitting in our senses to help in that effort. So they can take control where you find you fidgety, you can't sit still, or you got to keep moving because it's those spirits that understand if you're gentle and tranquil to be able to be calm, settled, and listen, you're going to hear. So they distract in any way they can. We've got to be mindful not to live after the flesh and the lust of it that these spirits operate in. Along the lines of Zach Ball talked about, we got to work on having control of our mind. We got to also work on controlling our body. Understanding why these senses were given from Allah to us to use. So paying attention to why we're doing things and what purposes it's serving. Is it helping us serve Allah or is it taking us away from the service? 
Okay. Yeah, those two things are connected. Because if you're doing things in your senses, that means that something bypassed you in your mind. And you didn't catch it. That's what you were just talking about earlier. Right. It bypassed you. And that's why it, it starts work. It starts showing itself in the senses. Like that's the last line of defense. Like once you start seeing that you're fidgety or you're or you're busy or you gotta put your hands on something, you're not paying attention to your thoughts. Because of the hastiness of spirit. That's good understanding. Like my my kids, for instance, I love using them because they don't know no better and they're very innocent. They don't understand the spirits. So sometimes like they may get hasty and they may do something, right? They may do a work and the work isn't good. And I ask them, hey, do you know why you did this? And they'll say, I don't know. And they're being very honest. They don't know because they didn't catch it in their mind. They don't know why they did it. Because it, it went into the senses. So they're being very honest. And, and I love them. I love delivering my, my little babies. But they they're being very honest. And they don't understand it. I don't know how to be racist and deliver. And at least they're being honest. That's a good start. <laughs> That's yeah. the right way to go. Say, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know you don't know. This is why I'm trying to tell you. You need to be vigilant. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> well, That's yeah. not a good thing that you don't know. Like, mm -hmm. look, we got to work on this. Like, mm -hmm. So that is really essential not to just be oblivious to what's going on, not catching what transpired. And it's good to know now, we notice our senses ain't uh, just fidgety or we're out of sorts from being peaceful and tranquil. Something got missed and we need to look into it and not just continue living in the flesh like nothing happened. Or else we're going to be in sin and it's going to cause us harm in the end if we don't actually learn and understand and put the work in to overcome that if you read Romans 8 and 13 please for if ye live after the flesh ye shall die but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body ye shall live and speaking that today if you live according to how you feel ye shall die but if you through the spirit pay attention to what Allah Hayim wills and overcome the feelings of the body, you're going to live. Because through the spirit, we are living by seeking the will of Allah Hayim to live by it as she does. And getting to where we are giving our body, mind and senses for Allah Hayim uses, being focused on listening and obeying them. Romans 13 and 14, please. But put ye on the Lord Yahweh Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. The Lord Yahweh Christ who helps us here. <laughs> put him on. Put on faith in him. Put on belief in his name. Put on trust in who he actually is the son of the living Allah Hayim, and Lord that has power in heaven and earth. Put him on and be attentive not to make provision for anything that the body desires in sin and lust. Essentially what Zach was talking about, catch them, catch them thoughts, catch them feelings so you don't fulfill any of the lust of those spirits. That's the provision. 
like you know what provision is. Should I get the definition? The action of providing or supplying something for use. Right. So supply, right? What is the supply here? What is the supply for the flesh? It's the thought. The thought is the provision for the flesh because the thought conceives the senses. So when it said put on the Lord Yahshua Christ, put on the mind of Christ, <laughs> and make not provision for the flesh. Don't put on the mind of iniquity or the angel of wickedness that's going to make provision. It's going to supply or feed the flesh so the flesh can can operate to fulfill the lust thereof. That makes sense. The mind of Christ is the desire to do the will of Allah, to delight in it, and to have the law in heart. And not taking any time off from that focus. Everything you let through the mind should be the law and the fruits of the spirit. It should bring forth one of those. If it brings forth the works of the flesh, you're going to fulfill the lust thereof. And it's going to be provision for the flesh. It makes it real simple. Praise Allah. Praise Allah, man. Yes. Uh, we got to pay heed to our body. And more importantly, because the body is a second defense, got to pay heed to our minds not to give any provision for any spirit to distract us from listening to our Allah desiring his will and delighting in his will to have his law in our hearts, having that mind of our Lord. And I can give you, let me give an example. Um, let's say you have this, you had a desire to go somewhere, right? You just got this desire, this urge. You're like, man, I want to go to this place, right? But it was an urge. You didn't catch the thought. You only felt the urge. Like, yo, like, you, you were sitting there like, like your body, like you feel it because that's how it, fornication works. You feel it. You're like, yeah, I want to go to that place. You didn't think that, but in your body, you're like, I want to go to that place. Now, you may have not caught the thought. Now, the thought might have said, I want to go look at women. But you didn't catch the thought. You only caught the feeling of wanting to go to whatever place it was. So, you actually have to catch the thought and say, hold up. That thought just told me I want to go look at women. I'm being truthful. I'm being honest. I heard that. It said, I want to go look at women. And I'm like, okay, I'm I'm not in agreement with that. Allah him keep that far from me. I don't want that. You actually have to go through the process and and and, and trace back what it was or you have to go and pray about it to reveal what that what that thought was because you actually have to understand it so that the next time it comes you are aware of it the first part of it is actually understanding it for the first time because it's new when you understand it for the first time it's new once it comes again you're like, oh, I'm familiar with that. Like, I know you, I know that's what you're trying to push me to go do. That's why you want me to go there. So that everybody can understand. And this can go for any aspect. Man, woman, and any other scenario, it can go for anything. 
Like you have to understand that once it enters into your senses and it's trying to push you to go do something, know that you miss the thought. Like we have to be aware of these things and understand it. It's interesting, God. It shows that no feeling comes without a thought that preceded it. Right. And it's important to understand, but God, if you read that first part of Proverbs 14, 29, please. My oh man, cause it sounds like you got a light bulb moment. <laughs> he that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. But he that is hasty of spirit exalted folly. It puts it in perspective. It shows how much attention it takes to detail. Because the wrath, remember, wrath is passion, is feelings, okay? So to have the great understanding of the actual spiritual aspect of things, to know it's a thought that leads to every feeling, a person of great understanding is slow to get into any feeling because they know it's a thought that comes with it. And if they feel a desire or a feeling arising, they're slow to give into it because they're going through that process. Hold on, where is this coming from? What is this leading onto? Mm -hmm. How is this arising? It's, I did have a light bulb moment. Praise Allah. It was like, <laughs> Yeah, boy, that's how much we got to slow down to know it's not just I. There's no I in this. We are literally vessels for spirits, good or bad. In or a vessel unto honor or a vessel unto dishonor. Yeah. They seek to get us in pride thinking it's actually us in anything. But they're playing us. It's manipulation. It's a spirit in everything. Like Zach was saying, these spirits need us to be hasty in our feelings. So we can't listen. But if we're slow to get into passions from being tranquil, it'll show we have great understanding of what's going on to keep us from these idols as they need us to be in them feelings. Mm -hmm. I would rather yeah. us be in those feelings because then that means we're not, we're not vigilant of our thoughts. Right. He that is hasty of spirit, exalted folly. He that is hasty of spirit is not exalting the Lord Christ or Allah or his Holy Spirit. Folly who close us so we have no memories of our indulgences. She is exalted so that we can stay in our indulgences as hastiness helps her operate. So that's how you see like Zach was talking about. We stay in it because we're going hastily and that folly is on us and we're not remembering what transpired. We're not understanding because in fornication is not understanding. We're not understanding that it was a thought that got us in that feeling, that gets us in that feeling every time as to why we go right back to that same indulgence when that opportunity arises again, not taking our time to actually slow down, knowing the war that's at play, not to be quick to give in to any emotion. That's not good for us. And that gives you understanding when if you ever encounter yourself or someone else that's saying the spirit moved them, but the work they did was evil, you know exactly what it was, that they were hasty and they didn't pay attention to their thoughts and they just gave into the, into the fornication of the feeling and the senses. It makes so much sense because the angel of wickedness arises desire. 
whereas the angel of righteousness talks to you. So you have to be calm and collected to hear rather than being moved in that feeling. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So this lesson was to get a good understanding of the dichotomy to know what's actually happening and make the right choices with understanding of what's happening. So work on our understanding. So Ecclesiastes 7 and 9, please. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Hopefully you understand that better. We are not wise, but we're not grasping what's actually going on to be slow to get in our feelings. And hastiness is at work to help anger get into our bosom, come into our heart to control us. And we know now it's not only anger, lust is there, fornication is there, hatred is there, irascibility is there, and folly is there. Pride. Yes, sir. and pride. The beginning of one turneth from his maker. So you got to understand why anger does rest in the bosom of fools because they don't actually understand the magnitude of what's happening. Hopefully we're getting understanding today so that we may come out of whatever things we didn't truly understand or were not really aware of or not want to see to come out of our own folly. And not let ourselves be clothed in folly to stay in the lack of remembering and understanding what's going on. Can you, um, Proverbs 18 and 2, please? A fool hath no delight in understanding but that his heart may discover itself. This is an interesting one here because this is being genuine. We may not understand it, but the scriptures are showing us what's actually befallen us. If we're sitting in a conversation or listening to something and we're not really listening because we're ready to talk or we got a whole, we're talking in our heads instead of actually listening because we may be trying to judge the person or trying to judge ourselves because you remember in the narcissism, there's the hypersensitive criticism where we're not listening because we're so afraid for the person to see who we really are in the conversation or we're trying to uphold our image. All in all, we're not listening because our actual delight is that our heart may discover itself. We're just focused on us and what we think. But we're showing we really don't have a delight in understanding because to get understanding takes listening genuinely. So we can know what is going on when we're more ready to speak than listen. Or we're talking to ourselves in our heads or actually listening to spirits and giving in to their imaginations and having that dialogue with them in our heads instead of actually listening to what's going on. So just as other spirits, folly has no delight in understanding to keep from evil, but she just gets into her own head with her own heart. And sometimes you can tell she is at work when a person isn't actually listening because they're in their own thoughts while you're talking or their response has nothing to do with what you're saying because they were just waiting for their turn to talk and share what was in their heart rather than actually listening to you. Or they may already think they understand, so they weren't really listening to you as their heart. They were lifted up waiting to discover their own heart to reveal what they think or what they believe. So their response, it ain't really along with what we're talking about. Knowing these things, 
You have anything before we move forward, Zachary? Mm -mm. Go ahead. One of these things, understand that's if, if you didn't get anything from today, <laughs> have great understanding to stay out your feelings and pay attention when the feelings are coming up, not to just give in to them, understand where it's coming from, and be tranquil and at peace. Calm your body, calm your mind. To be in the moment right where you are, wherever it is that you're doing or whatever it is that you're in the midst of, to be right there, right then, to pay attention to what's going on and be slow in what you're doing. But be swift and attentive to God and pay attention to what you're hearing to understand where it's leading you and who it is. All right. James 1 and 19 and 20, please. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of Elohim. Amen. And in our passions, it says the wrath of man, so it's the passions of man, not the passions of Elohim and the fruits of his spirit. Passions of man does not work the righteousness of Allah. Hayyam. So take your time to hear entirely and be slow to speak, paying attention to what's leading you to speak, who's leading you to speak, even inquiring about if you should speak <laughs> and what you ought to speak. Yeah. And be slow to get in any passion outside of cheer and joy and gentleness and being tranquil. If we are silent and pure to our heart, not eager to get into these spirits through covetousness, we will be able to listen, being swift to hear, and slow to get into our feelings or our own thoughts, or speaking when someone is talking, or while we're listening to something, speaking to ourselves or being distracted in some matter. And it'll help us really gain ground in faith and understanding and work in righteousness through obedience to hearing Allah Hayyam, our Lord, and the angel of righteousness. Anything else, Akron? Mm. I pray Allah Hayyam. That this message actually makes it to those that it's, it's meant for, that they actually can have ears to hear and eyes to see, and that they will actually um, investigate the deity and actually slow down themselves to actually examine their thoughts so that they can actually guard their heart and allow the good things from the angel of righteousness, the fruits of the spirit and the law to enter into their heart that they may actually start bringing forth fruit and actually it, start, it may start growing like a mustard seed. Because what happens is, is that when you start, when you start getting the weeds and thorns out, the, the actual plant or tree can actually start growing. And by you continually Allowing the good things to enter enter into your thoughts, into your heart. It's like you're watering the plant. So I, I, I really pray that many people start being able to water their plant. And that it actually starts growing and bringing forth fruit. Allah am willing. Yache, do his good pleasure. And Allah am work. Allah and make it the glory. Amen. Amen. We hope this has been helpful. And we look forward to the next opportunity with you. We're going to have another discussion, Lord willing, and get more in understanding the power of listening and the importance of it and how spirits work against it in the next teaching and uh, if there's anything you know how to reach out to us tech well 
<laughs> via email. <laughs> <laughs> via email <laughs> and uh, you can comment on the videos and such if you like all right happy seven ciao for the child love and ciao, peace be upon ciao, you man. out <laughs>